Allah's name, the merciful benefactor, the merciful redeemer. All the praise belongs to Allah. We praise him. We always seek from him his help. We ask his forgiveness. We repent unto Allah alone, and we seek refuge in him from all of our errors and mistakes, from all of our bad deeds. I witness openly that there is no God but Allah, that he is one and alone without any partner, without any partner or associates. And I bear witness that Muhammad is his servant and his messenger. The prayers and the peace be upon the most excellent, excellent, the most honorable messenger of God, upon his family's descendants, upon his companions, upon all the righteous believers. Amen. <clears throat> Allah has revealed to his servant Muhammad prayers and peace be upon him. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. The Baraka Ladi bi yadihi mulk wa huwa ala kulli shayin qadir. Eladi khalaqa mauta wa hayata li li yabluwakum ayyukum ahsana amalan wa huwa azizu ghafur. Sadaqallahu Akbar Alim. Allah's name, the merciful benefactor, the merciful redeemer. Allah has revealed the Surah al -Muk. Blessed be he in whose hands is the dominion, and he over all things has total power and control. He who has created death and life, that he may try which of us is best in deeds, and he is exalted in might of forgiving. So Allah give the truth. Praise be to Allah. Verses such as these grant us guidance for life that is subject to many tests and many trials. And these tests and trials are necessary. Because Allah says he has prescribed this for us. So it is the best for us to understand then how to cope with the trials for life how to cope with instances of death, how to cope with circumstances that we see playing out in the lives of humanity. We're also thankful that we are able to know in the time that we live in, able to see and understand and witness major issues that confront as a confronting human, human beings at this particular time. For us to try to have some way to understand it, this event that's taking place in Palestine among the Palestinian people, who, whether it's the Palestinians or whatever people it is, the same issues are what has to be brought, brought out in this life of humanity that God has planned, he has established for us, that he has deemed for us from the cradle to the grave. It's beautiful how Allah gives us these insights to understand our lives, understand these experiences, <clears throat> to help us cope with circumstances, cope with the adversity. So Allah says that to think of a blessing and to look for this blessing, the barakalazi, it is a blessing, blessed is he, and who has is the total dominion, has total control. Nothing occurs except by his agency, except by his will, except by within the context of what he's created. Therefore, every incident, good or bad, favorable or unfavorable, it has a limit that God has already determined for it. It's like a magnetism when we think of what harm comes to human beings. But there's a beauty there that when you hear the Palestinians under the greatest trial, the greatest circumstances, the most terrible circumstances, 
to witness what most of us have never had the opportunity to witness and pray along we would never have to witness. But to see the faith respond as you, you hear them saying continuously, has been Allah. Has been Allah. Allah is sufficient. Under the stress, in the smoke of the bomb, in the fire, in the janazas that are happening hourly, to say has been Allah. That's the power that cannot be killed, cannot be destroyed. So Allah says he has created death and he has created life. The Quran has his own vocabulary or its own uh, definition for things that we have to, what to learn from. Normally we probably say he's created life and death. We think in terms of life coming and death coming after. But the Quran is telling us something else, that there's a state of death or there's a state not of less, uh, the absence of life so much, but the possibility of potential in this creation that has to come before we experience really the fullness of life that Allah intended us to have, that Allah has designed for us. The life, that death, that life, the life of fulfill, fulfillment of the human, what Allah has in, in patterned in the human being. That's a, it's a, dead, it's a dead state because it hasn't been manifest yet. Circumstances like the Palestinian oppression of the Palestinians is some lesson in it for all humanity that we could not have learned without them. So it means there has to be faith to some faith to persevere through before we can reach the life that Allah has attained by virtue of. And we approach it with knowing that Allah is, is in it's in his hands, it's in, it's in his control. He has total control over the outcome. So testing is something that we have to have in life. Allah has prescribed, Allah has prescribed for us for us to reach the life that Allah intended us to achieve. And that is that life has to have testing in order for it to mature. And in life, our faith, for our faith to mature. This is all the, mat the maturation of faith. It's all the development of faith for, for humanity, not for a single person, but for humanity. And all humanity is created upon this same in this one pattern. So it's necessary for us to mature, to have a mature faith in life. Faith has to be very developed to manage the, the diversity that we have, that Allah has created within us. And that faith has to be mature in order for it to be productive. So Allah says, perhaps you dislike a thing that's good for you and love a thing that's bad for you. This is where the adjustment has to take place. And this is where an Islam revelation is. This is where religion comes and plays its major part in the life of human beings. A quote I read from a very, I think very insightful person, of course, student scholar of the Quran, well, not necessarily a scholar, but someone who studies religion as we're all invited to do, right? We're all invited to study our religion, to read, right? Ikra, to read, to study it. It says clearly in the Quran, they study the Quran, they study the book as it should be studied. And it's something that we probably maybe never think about, but the quote is the, uh, the particular, I can't recall his name, but he says, approaching life, temporal life, meaning the life this is temporary. How we approach this life from a spiritual perspective allows human beings to retain their humanness. And we can see this throughout history, that approaching the temporal life through the spiritual, that's why we come here today, because we believe that the spiritual element, the spiritual content that Allah has revealed, that Allah has created, and then revealed it to us to understand how it works, right? For us to understand the spiritual, how the spiritual and the material, the material and the physical work together, how they work together. I think there's a, a view from Far Eastern that they call it the yin and the yang, right? They're necessary components. So when we recall this, how Allah, well, when we read how Allah says he has structured this experience, this human experience, then we know we can embrace the spiritual life as it has a very important part of us being successful in life. So, but think about it, how it maintains our human, it allows human beings to retain their humans. If we just divorce the spiritual altogether, say we're going to deal with this ourselves. 
know that that's been tried before and there hasn't been much success with that. But a, pro a man, a very poor man in Mecca, right, in the 7th century, 6th century, right, Allah spoke to him, sent him an experience that we are here today as a result of that spiritual experience he had. We're here physically respecting and reflecting on that spiritual life, the value of having a spiritual life. So we didn't come here to get a check today, right? <laughs> no special contract, nothing physical, right? Because we know there's another value that we respect on Friday in Juma, that we celebrate. It's symbolic, really, isn't it? The dominion is always in check, Allah wants us to know. In other words, be firm through these circumstances. Be firm and know, believe, trust that Allah is, everything is in check. It can only have the limits that Allah sets for it. So Allah's hands, his agency, his, his means, you know, the support that Allah is saying is in his hand. That he has created both death and life to distinguish the quality of deeds. That's what the Quran of the verse says. This phenomenon of death and life, this interaction between death and life uh, and things that lead to it and re re respond from it, it says it distinguishes the quality of deeds that increases us in our human work. That's the whole object. To give us the greatest value, human value, by these interactions of death and life. So the object that we see, the object of turmoil, is to discern the quality of faith, to discern the quality of belief that is not based on something trivial, that's not based on something or some whim that we have, some personal desire, but it comes from a universal source, from the creator. So the test, teplu, teplu, teplau, to test means to bring something out. It's not just a test to see if you can handle it, no, it's a test is so that there's something inside that has to come out. There's something that has to surface related to our faith. That's why Allah tells us. We welcome Allah's test. We persevere through Allah's test. We know that life has, has this test. It's necessary for have the quality of faith, not to just say we have faith. And I couldn't help but think about the generations of African Americans in slavery. I'm speaking objectively, I'm not speaking racially, I'm speaking in terms of human terms, <clears throat> who had really a very, very terrible, for generations, circumstance that they had to cope, that they had to face, that they had no army, no government on their side. They had nothing. You know, there's a Reflection, we can reflect on the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, I think in this one. Prophet Muhammad, present, please be upon you. Recall when he had to leave Mecca, when he had to migrate, right? And where did he go? Him and Abu Bakr, the cave of Hira, the cave, not the cave of Hira. But our cave is where they took refuge because the Meccans were chasing them, of course, stop Islam, stop the spirit of Islam, to kill the prophet, kill his followers, to torment, right? And what happened in that cave? It's mentioned in the Quran. The Meccans got close, they some way traced the trail, right, and reached the point where they thought they might be hiding in the cave. And the spider, the spider's web came across the cave. Translate this into real life or in any circumstances where life is on one side and death is on the other side. See the phenomena? There's something rich in that moment that speaks to life and death. As the law, the prophet the law is saying to us, he has created death and life for a purpose, for us to understand something about circumstances that, to, uh, circumstances that life will have has to engage. So on one side was death. They were waiting to kill the prophet. But inside, on the other side, is very nothing but a thin spider web. That's all that's separated. Death on the outside and life inside. The life, the life of the two 
they get it. Prophet prayers, peace, because he, he knew that Abu Bakr was very concerned, of course, or anyone would be. But what he said, Allah Allah is with us. So his record, his his reflection then was not on the death of it, but on the life that Allah is with. And again, we're here today because of the life that was inside the cave that Allah protected. This is the book that was revealed to Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So Allah says, you shall certainly be tried and tested in your possessions, in your personal selves. And you shall certainly hear much that will grieve you. From those who receive the book before you and from those who worship many gods. But if you persevere patiently, if you forbear and guard against evil, that will be the determinant factor in all affairs. So that is really the criteria for us judging incidents when we're confronted with these circumstances or with these challenges in life, experiences in life that challenge us, and we think, what is Allah placed in this experience for me to experience? What is Allah, what are the elements here that are going to benefit me? What is the living aspect that will help me in the rest of my life? If Allah chooses me to continue to live, survive. So humanity today, this crisis, and in all the other crises, but particularly in this, in our day and time, generations before us may have had a major crisis in their life that touched their very core, of their being, as we see we're being touched today. The crisis in Palestine impacts on the whole of us. It's a human crisis. You can't learn of it or watch it or see it or witness it without being touched deep in your own self, your own soul. Humanity is being purged. And we see the nations and in these nations that are forced to come together or have determined to come together, we see them faced with redefining what is the purpose of life. What is our role? What is our responsibility? As governments, what is our responsibility? It appears that we have come to a cry with a criteria up before now that maybe in part has brought us to this dilemma, to this juncture, where we have determined what the criteria for living is. That ego, again, has determined the criteria for living for the values of what a nation should be. What should motivate a nation more than anything else? Power, right? Weapons, the sale of weapons, armaments, wealth. And the artificial systems has brought us in this dilemma. Well, we're now we are forced now to rethink really what is the purpose for national life? What is the purpose for global life? What for global life? What is supposed to be the objective? What is all this about? Why do we have all this uh, weaponry and armament, satellite power, drone power? Prosperity is a test. Allah says that you shall be tested. He says you shall be tried and tested in your possessions and walikum and in your personal selves, being fusikum. Again, pay attention to the logic. Pay attention to the wording. Possessions and then the selves because that is what is influencing us. This is what influences people more. This is what it has determined our, our understanding of ourselves, our self-understanding, self-view, self-awareness, determined by the material things. That's a punishment. And Allah is saying, bring this to our attention that we're tested with our possessions because they're going to influence who you are. You're not defining yourself by human uh, foundations or criteria anymore. It's by the things that we make with our hands potential that we have just to affect the material world and not the human world. So we come to this clash of civilizations, clash of nations, of what should be the criteria for life, for, for national life and for human life. And at the expense of human life, nations are struggling to just have a discourse at the expense of human life. Now, if that's not a judgment, I don't know what it is. 
So the crisis in Gaza impacts on the whole of human life. And it's because we have come up with other than what Allah has said should be the criteria. Taqwa should be the criteria for people, for human beings, for communities, for families, for nations, for every human experience. Taqwa is the only proper, the only uh, uh, criteria or base or foundation that will give success. So prosperity, Allah has said that your wealth is a test. Prosperity is a test. What does it do? It inflates the ego. It exaggerates the self-worth. Power. Power. I have to look like I have power. You should see my army and you should be afraid of my army. This is what human beings have to come to because there's some powerful army. 50,000, 100,000, 200,000. We're, we're trying to outgrow that primary, that pre, uh, primary development stages. We should have outgrown that through, through, through the knowledge and through revelation. So prosperity is a test for us, a tendency to inflate, to exaggerate our worth, to exploit others, to exploit those who do not have the power, to abuse the power, to manipulate the power. All this is the elements of the equation that have caused us to arrive at this very, very dark time in the crisis in Palestine. To see babies in garment, in, in burial garments. That's the sign. That's the sign that humanity is at a crossroad. So Allah says the test is also of adversity, not just the material test, but there's a test in adversity, test in these conflicts. And Allah says, why are we test? In order that they might turn to us, in order that we may reconsider what we're saying is really the foundation for life, really what should be our mo main motivation in our life. What should be the goal of life? So the Quran addresses this because there's a higher consciousness that the Quran aims, a revelation. It's a higher conscious state that the prophets, prayers, and peace upon them all were pointing to, who were witnesses, who really were witnesses to, who really in their own individual life they experienced a transformation in their own hearts and so. And that's why they, they were willing and ready to, to give their life for the message because the message of Islam, the revelation had become more valuable than anything else. So Allah is addressing a high, our objective with the Islam is not to have, just have a Muslim community. That's not to can't be the objective. It doesn't take much to have that, to have any type of community. But that the bigger goal, that we will play a role in reaching that higher goal. That's why I says the problem was sent as a mercy for all the world. So as I conclude, we pray Allah that he bless humanity to learn from this very dire set of circumstances and that it will serve to motivate us in our logic, in our thinking, in our aspirations that they become more human aspirations and benefit those who need benefit and who need help. So we pray Allah, we ask Allah, oh Allah, make Muhammad successful and the followers of Muhammad successful. As you did make Abraham successful and the followers of Abraham successful. So surely your praise and magnify in our midst. Oh Allah, bless Muhammad and bless the followers of Muhammad. As you did bless Abraham and the followers of Abraham. So surely you are praised and magnified in our midst. Amen. <laughs> 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 In the world is made up of many religious persuasions, as a lot mentions in the Quran, the Christians, the Jews, the Muslims. And that we all have a responsibility 
to make life better, to contribute to life during our time, during our short period of time. And Allah said that he shall test us, all of us, with something of fear and hunger, some loss of goods, loss of life, even the fruits of our labor, to so give glad tidings to those who patiently persevere, who say when afflicted with a calamity, to Allah we belong and to him is our return. It's, it's, I think it's a reflection of this verse. In the words of Nelson Mandela, South Africa, who spent 27 years in prison under an apartheid rule, Maybe you've heard this statement that's been repeated, I've seen it many times now. It's a quote of him, who said, after they had had their victim and overthrew apartheid there in South Africa, they said, we know, quote, we know too well that our freedom is incomplete without the freedom of the Palestinians speaking to the oneness of humanity, the original state, not the garments, not the dress, but the original core of human being. He said his freedom will be incomplete until their freedom is intact. So let's conclude with this verse in the Quran that really, really is, speaks throughout, through the years, through the generations. This is what Allah Rahim Allah says, Permission to fight is granted to those who have been oppressed. There's nothing insensitive about the crime for any circumstance, for any situation. It's there all the time. Permission to fight has been granted to those who have been oppressed. And Allah is certainly able to help, help them. They are those who have been expelled from their homes in defiance of the right. For no cause other than except that they say our Lord is alive. Did not God check one set of people by means of another? There would surely have been pulled down the monasteries, the churches, the synagogues, and mosques in which the name of Allah is commemorated in abundant measure. Allah will certainly help those who help his cause. For verily Allah is full of strength exalted in life. So that nothing is hidden in any, ex, in any as event as we are witnessing today. It is a concern of a revelation is addressed in the Quran in all these fine elements. So I conclude because this gives some succor, I think, to the broadness of Allah's will and the circumstances that we're experiencing today. It gives me some sucker. <laughs> when Allah, the Prophet, prays and peace upon him, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, according to the uh, hadith of Abu Hurairah, he said, The Prophet recited a verse from the Quran about the day the earth would give its account. The day is coming when the earth is going to give an account. Then he asked, do you know what this account will be? And then the list is, of course, the five his companions there said, Allah and his messenger will bless him. He said, the account the earth will give, said the prophet, is the witness it will bear to the deeds, the misdeeds all men and women have committed throughout its length and breadth. From the time there was the first human being to the time there will be the last human being. This is God's judgment. Nobody's going to escape. It looks like on television, maybe. How will they pay for this unspeakable crime? How will they answer? They will answer. Not only them, but every other one before them and everyone else. We need to know the real God. These images flash, these events, all this activity. Yes, it's there on the surface, but there's a bigger reality. And that's what the prophet was telling them. Isn't that something, the deep spiritual death vision that the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam He said, we'll bear to the deeds and misdeeds of all men and women have committed throughout its length and breadth and to the exact moments 
It was October 7, 8, 9, 10, to the exact moment. I could look at hospital uh, units. I don't care where it was. It's been already recorded. Throughout his length and breadth to the exact moment of their commission. That is what the prophet concluded. I like the way he concluded. To, to coin, to capture, to frame. He said, that is the word, that is the earth's account will be. That is what the earth's account will be. We all will account, but this earth is a large creation. It will speak. It's going to give account. So this is why we should be as close to a law we possibly can. Because not of what we know, but what we don't know. And I'm not willing to take a gamble with them or to trust that it is Allah. Subhanahu rabbi ka rabbi izziti amla yasifun wa salamun ala mursaleen wa hamdulillahi rabbil alameen. It is all to be your Lord, the Lord of majesty, above that which they associate with him. And peace be upon those who are sent to war. And praise be to Allah, the cherisher, sustainer of all the systems of knowledge. Amen. 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 Amen.